Hi, and welcome to the second video, uh, second learning video for Module 3. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at some basic loan facts, so let's just jump right in. Uh, first, I want to talk about determining loan balances. I mentioned in the first video uh, of the module that a lot of the problems involve being able to calculate a balance of a loan uh, at certain times, at intermediate stages here. And so let's, let's focus, let's turn our attention to that for, for a moment. Now there's going to be two ways to do this. One is called a retrospective way. We've got our timeline on our, uh, by the way, we've got the timeline on the screen in this slide. One way to calculate the balance of a loan is retrospective. Retrospective means we're just looking back in time. We're not worried about what's happening in front of us. We're only looking backward in time. So since B sub K is the balance just after the Kth payment, I'm not worried about the payments that come after that. So I'll, I'll just take those off the screen. So now the retrospective calculation to calculate the balance at time K, uh, cap B sub K, is to first take the loan amount and accumulate that to time K. Now that's what you would owe if you had made no payments on the loan. But you have made payments, so you need to subtract from that amount the accumulated value of the payments that you have made. And so this is the retrospective definition of the, the balance of a loan just after the Kth payment. It's the accumulated value of cap L minus the accumulated value of the past payments. Now the accumulated value of cap L, I can give you symbolically what that is because we have symbols for that. Cap L is the loan amount you know, I, I'm thinking of, you know, maybe at time zero, and I'm looking at cap B sub K as a time K value, so I'm going K periods. I need to accumulate cap L K periods, and I would do that by multiplying by 1 plus I to the K. So I get this balance at time K is the loan amount accumulated by multiplying by 1 plus I to the K. Once again, that's how much you would owe if you had made no payments on it, but then you subtract off what the accumulated value of the payments that you have made. Now there's not symbolically, there's not a way for me to, to, to give you an expression for the accumulated value of the past payments because I, I would need to know what is, is there some sort of structure to the past payments. If the past payments are all the equal to each other, then I could give you an accumulated value using like an, an S symbol, an R times an S angle K for instance. Or if the payments were increasing or decreasing Arithmetically, I might be able to give you some expression, but again, my point is, uh, and unless I knew more information about the payments, I'm just going to leave this as uh, that the balance at time K is cap L times 1 plus I to the K minus the accumulated value of the past payments. Okay, so now let me get back to, let me throw the other payments back into the picture though, because the next way for us to calculate, it's a second alternative way for us to calculate the balance at time K, is to look prospectively. Now prospectively means we're looking forward in time, so we're not concerned about past payments. So let me take those off the screen. We're not, we're not concerned about those past payments if we're looking prospectively. And in this case, the balance at time K is easy. It's just the present value of what the remaining payment are. Present value of the remaining payments will pay back the balance of the loan. So that's what the, the balance is at time K. All right, again, let me put in all the, all the, all the, the payments because I want to make one other comment. I've made this comment before that the balance at time zero is equal to cap L. And then using the previous line, I can think of that as just the present value of all the payments. So the loan amount is going to be just the present value of, of all the payments. Okay, now let's turn our attention to these symbols, the cap I sub K and the cap P sub K. Uh, the amount of interest being repaid with the Kth payment and the amount of principal that's being repaid in the Kth payment. Uh, so again, that's what uh, cap I sub K is. Sometimes, it, so it's the amount of interest paid during the Kth period. Sometimes you'll see that as the Kth installment. Don't get confused by the terminology. The Kth installment is just the, the Kth period of the loan. Okay, symbolically, what is that equal to? Well, uh, again, we did, well, we did this way back, way back in Module 1. We're looking at, well, how much interest are you paying on an amount? Uh, interest is paid at the, at the end of the period based on the, the, ba the balance or an amount at the beginning of the period. And so the amount of interest uh, at time K that you owe will be the interest rate times the balance at the beginning of period balance. And so that's the balance at time K minus 1. So that's a very important you know, fact that we're going to use uh, with how we calculate the amount of interest uh, during a period. And then let's look at the cap P sub K value. That's the amount of principal repaid with the Kth payment. But remember, those two things add together to give you what the 
total payment is, so I could get the amount of the principal repaid by subtracting from the total payment, which is cap R sub K, I'll subtract from that the amount of interest that I'm paying. One other comment that I want to make is that it, with these P's, if you look at cap P sub 1, that's the amount of principal or the amount that you borrowed. The principal is the amount that you borrowed. So it's the amount that you borrowed that you're paying back in the first payment. And cap P sub 2 is the amount that you, that, uh, the amount that you borrowed that is being paid back in the second payment and so forth. So if you add up all these P values, P cap P1 plus cap P2 all the way up to cap PN, then you've accounted for all that you borrowed. In other words, the loan amount is just the sum of all of the cap P sub K values as K goes from 1 to N. Okay, now let's move on. I want to talk about balances at neighboring time periods. We've kind of discussed it a little bit in the previous video, but I, I want to talk about it a little bit more. Now, what's accounting for the difference in those values is the fact that you're actually making a payment at time k. A cap R sub k is the payment at time k. We, when, in a previous video, we talked about how to get balances just before the payment. So just before the payment of k, just before the payment at time k, the payment of cap R sub k, the balance would be the balance at time k minus 1 accumulated for a period. And so the balance at time k we discussed was the balance just before that payment, which is uh, the cap B sub k minus 1 accumulated, or times 1 plus i, and then minus, minus the actual amount of the, the payment. So this is one way that we could get the balances, uh, or relate the balances at neighboring, age, at neighboring time values here. The balance at time k would be the balance at time k minus 1 accumulated, so we accumulate that, and then we subtract off the amount that we pay. That would give us, the uh, again, the balance at time uh, at time k. And now I want to look at another way to calculate this balance. And in order to do that, let me first distribute across the 1 plus i in that last equation there. So I'm going to uh, distribute the 1 plus i or distribute the cap b sub k plus 1, k minus 1 across the 1 plus i. And this is what I get. Then I want to, I want to remind you that the amount of the payment at time k, cap r sub k, can be split up as the sum of the cap P sub K plus the cap I sub K values. And above, we see that the cap I sub K value is I times the balance at the beginning of the period, which is cap B sub K minus 1. So look, let me highlight in blue here the, the, what's going on here. Uh, I've got a I times cap B sub K minus 1 in my last, in that very last expression, and I'm going to substitute in for that just the cap I sub K value. That's the amount of interest that you're paying uh, with that K payment. So I'm just going to substitute in cap I sub K for what was in blue. And now let me clean up the slide a little bit because I want to focus now on the very last term in that last expression, the cap R sub K. I recognize that cap R sub K is, is the sum of the cap I sub K and the cap P sub K. So sub, substitute that in for cap, uh, cap R sub K. And then notice that the cap I sub Ks are just going to add out. And so I get then that the balance at time K, I can also calculate that by taking the balance at time K minus 1 and just subtracting off how much is being applied towards the principal, to, towards the amount borrowed at time K. So. Uh, I hope I didn't make this too confusing. I mean, this is just, uh, it should be kind of intuitive to you. So let's look at the two ways to calculate the balance at time k. One is to take the balance at the beginning of the period, accumulate it, and then subtract off the total payment. So that's that first equation uh, before the OR statement. The, the second equation after the OR statement says you can, take the, you can find the balance at time k by taking the balance before that, and then subtracting off the amount of principal that you're repaying in that payment. So again, try to develop some intuition on some of this stuff. That's, that's not stuff that I would suggest that you uh, memorize, write down to try to memorize a formula. Try to develop some intuition on it. Okay, let's move on and let's look at, some, at, at these cap I sub K and cap P sub K values again. Um, a common 
common questions that you're going to be asked when you look through the, the material here. Here, you're going to be. Uh, these are these are the types of questions that you're going to see. One is going to be, well, what is the amount of principal that you repaid on the loan during two between two time periods, from time K to time N. And another question that you'll be asked is, well, what is the amount of interest that you paid on the loan from time K to time N? Okay, so to illustrate uh, these formulas, let's look at just kind of a, uh, an easy example or a, a short, short example. Let's say I'm looking over, the, over three, uh, three periods, from time 10 to time 13. I have a payment at time 11, a payment at time 12, and a payment at time 13. Symbolically, that's what's in red. Now, let's put some numbers to these things to make it, to, to make it easier. So let's say that the balance at time 10 was 1,000. And let's just say that the payments were 120, 130, and then 140. Now, I'm going to make up some numbers. Don't get caught up in, into, in, in the, the, the weeds here. Don't, don't look at the numbers and, and numerically try to figure out how I'm coming up with these numbers. I'm making them up. So don't numerically, come, don't, don't try to figure out where these numbers are coming from. I want you to look at the relationships between the symbols. Okay, so now let's say that the amount of interest that, I, that, was, that was paid, uh, that was owed or, or paid during that, with that 11th payment of 120, let's say $100 of it was just paying off interest on the loan. Well, then the difference there would be 20, and that's, that's telling me that's how much I would be paying off on what I borrowed would, would be 20. And now let's do some, some extra numbers. Let's say that, let's fill in the, the, the other details. Let's say that $95 of the 130 went towards paying interest on the loan. That means 35, uh, I'm talking about in the 12th payment, and that means $35 of the 12th payment went to paying off the, 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 the principal. And likewise, at time 13, let's say 90 went to interest and 50 went to principal. Now I have enough information to find out what the balance is at time 13. So for instance, let's focus on what's in blue here. I can get the balance at time 11. Well, at time 10, I owed a, a $1,000 at time 10 and I paid off 20 of it. That's the principal that I'm being paid off. And so I've got $980 left to pay off. Likewise, at time uh, at time 12, the outstanding balance at time 12 would be 980 minus the 35, which is 945. And then the balance at time 13 would be the 945 minus 50 that, that went to paying off the, the loan amount. So that would be 895. And so this is the picture that I would have then. I'm going to take out the intermediate steps and say the balance at time 10 is what, if, if the balance at time 10 is 1,000 and these were the payments and the interest amounts and the principal, principal amounts, then the balance at time 13 would be 895. So the question is, well, how much, how much principal was repaid then from time 10 to time 13? Well, you might be looking at it and say, well, you, you gave me that numbers with the, what's in blue there. And you're right. You add up those values that are in blue, the 20 plus the 35 plus the 50 or 105. Or, but the second way to do that is to recognize that if I took the difference between the balance amount at time 10 and the balance amount at time 13, that's, that's actually that same sum. That's actually 105 also. So to answer the question, the amount of principal that was repaid from time 10 to time 13, which I'll symbolically write using the shorthand uh, summation notation here, sigma, uh, sigma PJ from J11 to, to 13, I just take the difference in the balance uh, the balances at time, uh, uh, you know, between the time periods. So the balance at time 10 minus the balance at time 13. Uh, recognize the balances are going down because we're paying, we're paying off the loan here. Now, one thing I want to point out before I move on to the general statement is look at the time values. I went from time 10 to time 13, and I'm saying that the principal repaid during that period from time 10 to time 13 would be a summation from 11 to 13. Don't put a 10 there because if you're summing from 10 to 13, you're counting P10, and it's P10, P11, P12, P13. That would have been four principal uh, payments made, but there were only three during that time period because the balance at time 10 is after that payment. It does not include the payment at time 10. So uh, now let's answer the general question then. What is the amount of principal repaid from time K to time K to time M? It would be symbolically, we're talking about just adding up the principal amounts, P sub J, as J goes from time K plus one to M. And we can get that by taking the difference between the balance amount at time K and the balance amount at time M. 
Okay, so now the next question is, well, what about the amount of interest that's paid between those time periods? And again, once you could, you could, I'll highlight it in blue, you could just add up those interest amounts and you get the correct answer. It's 100 plus 95 plus 90 or 285. However, recognize that the 100 was 120, the payment of 120 minus the 20 that went towards, towards the principal at that time period. Likewise, the the, the, at time 12, the 95 was 130 minus the, the 35 and so forth. So I could have also arrived at the same answer by taking the sum of the uh, uh, amounts that were paid, the payment amounts, the 120 plus 130 plus 140, and subtracting off the parts of those that went towards the principal, paying back the principal, or the 20 and the, and the 35 and, and the 30. So I highlighted in blue those because remember that that's the sum of the principal amounts, and I could, I could uh, account for that by just taking the difference between the balances. So that's 100, I'm sorry, 1,000 minus the 895 there. So let's get to the punchline. What is the amount of interest paid from time 10 to time 13? Symbolically, I could represent that as using summation notation as a cap I sub J. J's going from 11 to 13, just like before. Even though I went from 10 to 13, the J values start at 11. I'm not including the payment at time 10. And I could symbolically write that as, oh, well, I just add up the payment amounts and then I subtract off from that the amounts that uh, that the the amounts that were going towards principal repayments, and I do that because in the a little while ago we we saw that that last summation, the the sum of the principal repayments is just the difference between the balances. It's uh, cap B sub ten minus cap B sub thirteen, and so the general the general answer to this, what is the amount of interest paid from time K to time M, is uh, symbolically, I would write it using this sigma notation. Uh, and, and then, you know, I, I just have the same thing here that I had in the last slide using uh, K and M instead of uh, 10 and, and 13. So it's the same thing. Let's move on so I can get to, the, uh, to my final comment here. So going back to my slide here, what is the amount of principal repaid from time K to time M? Uh, it, symbolically, that's what it is, but I'd rather you not try to memorize that formula, I'd rather you try to develop some intuition and think about it. How much principal are you repaying from time K to time M? Well, at time K, I owed a certain amount. At time M, I owe a certain amount. And if I take the difference between those two amounts, that's gonna be how much I paid back in principal. So it's just the difference between the balances at time K and, and M. On the other hand, what's the amount of interest paid from time K to time M? I'm doing this in a certain order because uh, if you, because in order to answer that question, how much interest is paid from time K to time M, I would do the first, I would do the, I would calculate the amount of principal repaid first because I'm going to subtract the amount of principal repaid from the total amount of payments that I made. So symbolically, there's your answer. There's a formula. I hope you don't memorize it, but there's a formula. I could substitute in for that last summation. I could substitute in the difference of the um, of the balances. Again, I hope you don't memorize the formula. I hope that you think about it and just uh, think about it as the way that I that I mentioned it just a second ago. First calculate the amount of principal that was repaid from time K to time N, and that's the difference between the balances at time K and time N, and then subtract that from the total amount of the payments that were made between time K and time M. So in words, I would, uh, again, I, I, I hope that you'll just uh, you know, conceptually or, or, or intuitively, intuitively think of it this way, that the amount of interest paid from time K to time N is, from time K to time M, is the sum of the payments from time, after time K up to and including time M minus the amount of principal repaid from time K to time M. Okay, there was a lot of stuff in that video. I'm sorry, it's kind of got to be a long video, but I didn't feel like it was a good, uh, a good one to split up. And so uh, please re-watch the video several times if you have to. There was a lot of stuff in here, but these are the types of things that you need to develop some intuition on that's gonna give you a good chance to, to pass the, uh, the FM exam. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.